Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video, we're going to explain how to create and use report templates in SQL Server Reporting Services. We'll start the video with a quick explanation of what a report template is and why you might want to use one in the first place. Then we'll explain how you can get started with a blank template, followed by how you can add a variety of items to the template, including things like corporate logos, text boxes with expressions, tablix items, and even report data items such as data sources and data sets. We'll then explain how you can copy the template to the correct location to make it available to your report project, before we finally show you how you can then use that template to create new reports in your project. So let's get started. The idea behind a report template is fairly simple. Ordinarily, when you choose to create a new report in your report project, you can right-click the reports folder and choose to add a new item. And by default, you'll see four shortcuts listed in the dialog box. You'll see Report Wizard, Report, Data Source, and Data Set. So traditionally, you choose the report object and then click the Add button and you'd end up with a completely blank report, just like this. But you may have noticed as I was doing this, I've actually got an extra op option available to my um, to my report project when I choose to add a new item. I can also choose to use my YSL template. And if I choose to create a report based on this, if I click the Add button, my report comes along automatically with a whole bunch of different items. It's got a report logo, a couple of expressions for headers for a report header, um, a standard table that doesn't have any fields in it, and it also, in the report data window, has a standard um, shared data source as well. So that immediately means that I've saved time creating the data source and adding in the standard header code, um, standard header items, adding a table. So all I need to do is just get on with the actual design of this specific report. So this video is going to show you fairly quickly and simply how you can create your own report templates to hopefully save you some time as well. Creating a new report template is actually quite straightforward. We'll start by adding a new item to our report project. So from the Solution Explorer, we can right-click the Reports folder, choose Add New Item, and we're going to use the bog standard blank report template to begin with. I'll give this a sensible name. I'm going to call mine Wise Owl Template. It's not a very inventive name, but it's good enough for what we're trying to demonstrate. And once we've added it, we then simply need to add into the report all the items that we'd like to see appear in our template. I'm going to start by adding a page header to the report. Now I can do that in one of two ways. I can head to the report menu at the top of the screen and choose add page header. Alternatively, I can right click somewhere around the border of the report and choose add page header from the right click menu instead. What I can then do is insert some items into the page header that I'd like to see appear at the top of every page. So what I'm going to do is right click into there and choose insert and I'm going to choose an image to begin with. I'm now going to browse for my image using the import button over here and the image that I'm going to import is actually sitting on my desktop and it's a symbol image of the YSL logo. So I choose to open that file, click OK, I'll get a basic YSL logo inserted into the page header. Next I'm going to add a text box which will display the date and time that the report was printed or viewed. So to do that I'm going to right click into the page header and I'm going to choose insert text box and I'll move this to position it towards the right hand edge of the page and just make that a little bit larger. Then I'm going to right click into the text box and I'm going to choose to build an expression. I'd like my expression to concatenate a string of text along with it, the date and time. So I'm actually going to start by opening some double quotes and say report try that again, report um, run at and then close the double quotes and use an ampersand to concatenate another piece of information. I'd like to have a nicely formatted version of the date and time. So what I'm going to do is go to the common functions category and in the text category I'm going to insert the format function by double clicking on it. Um, I could also have used the, the format date time function here as well, but I'm using the format function just for this demonstration. Two arguments to fill in for the format function, the expression or the thing that I'm trying to format, followed by how I would like it to be formatted. So the thing that I would like to format is one of the built-in fields. So if I head to the built-in fields category, there's a property here or a, a field called execution time. So if I double click that and insert it into the format function, then I can type in a comma and then open some double quotes and type in the format for the dates that I want to display. So I'm going to use a standard sort of UK format, so that's going to be dd forward slash 
two capital M's for months, another forward slash, and then four Y's. Follow that with a space, and then two capital H's, a colon, two lowercase m's for minutes, another colon, and two s's for seconds. Close the double quotes, and then close the parentheses, and that's the expression created. So just to show you what that will generate, if I click OK at that point, and then preview the report just to show you what it does, it should give me the date and time that the report was run, eventually, and there it is. OK, so one more text box to add, and this is going to display the page number that the report um, uh, the, of, the, of each page of the report. So I'm going to insert one more text box into the page header, and I'm going to position it in line with the previous text box, make it the same size, and I'm going to right-click into there, and I'm going to choose to build another expression. So this time, I'm going to concatenate, first of all, the word page, the literal string page, then I'm going to use an ampersand to add in another built-in field. I'm going to use the overall page number field. And then I'm going to use another ampersand, and in a set of more double quotes, I'm going to say of, and close the double quotes, and then use another ampersand. And then I'm going to insert another built-in field, which is overall total pages. I might then just concatenate one more word to the end of this. I'm going to concatenate the word pages to the end. So if I have 10 pages in the report, this expression will say page 1 of 10 pages. Just a quick click of the OK button and a quick preview of this to make sure that it's generating correctly. I've only got one page in the report and I, this is <laughs> this is irritating to me. I don't want it to really say one pages. Um, we could use an if function to, to check how many pages there were in the report and make this say page if there's only one and pages if there's multiple pages. But for now I'm just going to leave this as it is. So back to the design view. You might also consider adding items to the report page itself. So rather than just adding simple logos and text boxes to the report header or footer, you could insert things like tablets items into the report page. So I can right click and choose to insert a table or a chart or any of the other standard items as well. If I choose to insert a table, because that's the most likely type of object I'm going to use in the reports in this project, I'll be asked which data set I want to assign to this table. Well, I'm actually just going to click Cancel there. I don't want to assign any data set to my table at all yet. I don't know what the data set will be until I actually generate a new report using this template. But I can do standard things like position the table in a particular location, I can choose to format some of its items, so I could format the header row so it's a particular background colour for example, and give it a standard font colour as well, and any of the standard formatting options I might like to apply. I could even make the table an appropriate size for the report, so I make sure it fills the entire width of the page. And then that's sitting there ready for me to assign fields to it whenever I want to create a new report based on this template. A report template isn't just limited to containing items on the report page. You can also include any report data items that you might need. So for example, in my report project, I know that all of my reports are going to be based on a data source connecting to my movies database. So I can use the report data window to include that data source in the report template. So I can add a data source, give it a sensible name, DSC Movies, and tell it to use my shared data source reference. Alternatively, I could create an embedded connection which would become part of my report template as well. I can click OK, and now that data source is part of every report based on my template. I could also create things like parameters and even data sets, although it's much more likely that every different report that I create will use a different data set, so I'm not going to do that at this point. The last thing that we have to do for the moment in our report project is simply close and save our report. So that report now becomes part of our report project. The next step is to take this file and put it in the appropriate location so that it then behaves as a template. To copy the report template into the relevant location, we're going to use a simple Windows Explorer window, which I've opened one up already, and this is pointing currently to the place where my movies project is stored. So we need to delve into this folder, and then into the movies project folder within there. And finally, in this folder, we need to find our report file, our RDL file, for our WiseOwl template. So we can right-click on that and choose to copy it. And then here's the fun bit, finding the folder into which we need to paste this file. So first of all, I'm going to head to my um, OS 
C drive and then I'm going to head straight to my program files folder. Just a quick note for anybody running Windows 64-bit um, editions of Windows, you'll need to use the program files folder that's marked with the x86 notation. So you'll have a program files and a program files x86. You'll need to go into the x86 folder. For everybody else in a 32-bit edition, we'll just head straight to program files. The next thing we need to do is find the folder for the correct version of Visual Studio. Now this depends on which version of reporting services you're using. If you're running reporting services or SQL Server 2008 release 2, then your version of Visual Studio will be Visual Studio 2008. And the internal version number for Visual Studio 2008 is Visual Studio 9. So you'll need to head into that folder right now. If you're using reporting services or SQL Server 2012, that uses Visual Studio 2010 as its reporting tool. So what we're going to do is head into the Microsoft Visual Studio number 10 folders. That's the internal numbering for Visual Studio 2010. So whichever of those two folders you need, go into that folder now. Then within that folder, what you'll need to do is find the inventively and obviously named folder called Common7. Within there, you'll need to find the IDE folder, Integrated Developer Environment, Within there, you'll need to find the folder called Private Assemblies. Within there, you'll need to find the folder called Project Items. And finally, within there, you'll need to find the folder called Report Project. And if you double-click into that folder, some of the things you'll see here, you'll hopefully recognize from when you start to create a new item or add a new item to a report project. These are some of the icons that you will see. So what we need to do is paste our copied report file into this folder and it now will become a template in our report project. In order to use your report template all you need to do now is head back to your report project and choose to add an item to the reports folder just as though you would normally. So if I right click on the reports folder and choose to add a new item, I'll find that my report template is listed. And I can simply select it, I can give it a different name, um, I'm not going to bother here just for the sake of demonstration, hit the add button and you'll find that your new report comes along with all of the items that you added to it just before you saved it. So hopefully you'll agree, it's a nice simple solution to hopefully saving a lot of time with laboriously creating the same standard basic report layout and in the same basic data source again and again and again. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wisel.co.uk.